just be careful not to flip your table over too soon. Because you ain't seen nothing yet. Alright, so, after getting my ass horribly slaughtered on the endless difficulty... Um, um, let's tone it down to impossible. Yeah, let's... let's tone it down! To impossible! Alright? How silly does that sound? Um, um, get the roving clans in here. Shit, maybe I will make four continents instead. Um, just to keep the variety going, alright? Um, 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 and uh, we'll be learning the roving clans for the very first time. So what the hell are these guys? Next big wasteland 2 patch is almost ready. We want to test it a bit more. Should be good to go last week. Cool. Maybe I'll explore it off stream and then see how much I like it. Nomadic cities, by gaining full control of the giant scarabs upon whose backs many tents of the great caravan cities rest. The roving clans can move their settlements at will, can relocate cities and ground districts at will. How crazy is that? Plenty crazy if you ask me. Brace yourself. When the ice and snow come, caravan movement is slowed and the tents of the roving clans are exposed to frigid winds. It is a difficult time, trade route, revenue drops and it is more expensive to maintain cities. Minus 50% dust from city upkeep during winter season. Does it mean that things are cheaper to upkeep? Or does it mean that I earn less and city upkeep is something that I earn? I would assume that it's like, it's bad for me in some way. So I guess I lose half my income and then minus 25% of the trade route bonus. I've never actually used trade routes yet, it's gonna be a new learning experience. Cuts both ways. Whether another empire buys or sells, the roving clan's traders will always take a slice of the transaction. Receives 8% of every transaction fee paid by other empires. Whoa. Some free money right there. I gain less. Alright, Drake, Drake Hyena. Thanks for confirming. Insider trading. Additional information on the marketplace use. Keys to the market. Another empire getting too big for their boots? Perhaps we should ban them from the market and see how they fare then. Can use the market ban option. Prevents to, to the target. Prevents to be the target of a market ban. So I can use the market ban option and prevents me from being the, the target of it. Can trade. Make trade not war. Cannot declare war. The roving clans believe that warfare is only for desperate fools. They do not view it as a viable option. But then, mercenary comforts. L more life on mercenaries and movement on mercenaries. Interesting. Peace and prosperity. Once a peace treaty has been signed, roving clans can enjoy commercial and research agreements with their newfound partners for free. Commercial and trade agreements are free. And then my units, the Dervish. Fast charging, stunning cavalry. Kasai, a horse archer. With point blank power, but three range and fast. And the Yermak. The infantry. Fast and sweep strike back. The main quest I start with Imperial coinage and with mercenary market research already. Um. Alright, it's gonna be my first playthrough, so I will read everything, of course.
So let's see how it goes. How I, I, I will need to learn how the mechanics work in terms of trading. Where do I click? What do I do? And what do I research to have it available? I'll have to learn some of that. And I will have to face the oceans in this time around, which is uh, something I haven't faced before. I guess I'll have to research the boats on the second tier, in the second era, so that I can actually meet other empires from abroad in case I want to trade with them. Now, what does it mean I cannot wage war? Does it mean I can never capture an enemy capital? Does it mean that I can never actually attack onto their territory? And once they land grab me, I will never be able to, to take a land back. The mounted archers are one of the best scout units of the game. Seven movement. Seven movement is a lot. That's almost twice of the normal movement of the unit. Holy shit. Do they have as much movement during combat so I can kite things for free? Control their destiny by building. Others through science or by conquest. Do they not see that only dust can give them what they want? For it is money and power and magic all intertwined in a single miraculous substance. It is the essence that binds our civilizations together. Perhaps, as we let them believe, it is our weakness. But I have seen its wonders. It is not our weakness. It is rather how we will rule them all. Ah, <laughs> the greedy bastards are here. Oh, they can declare it. All right, I guess that's that's the way I can do it. Um. 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 All right, what's my starting location? Do I need to mulligan this? Because I don't see a single freaking anomaly, unless I count this massive tree, I guess. Click. So one scout will check out if there's a viable expansion here, but there's only a single anomaly, and then... Apart from this, I'm not sure I like this location. There's zero research if I build here. Zero research. Oh. 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 Click. Now, if I wanted to go this direction... Click. Oh. Tetike, the ancestors of this faction were bred for blood sports as a watch beasts. And as watch beasts. They have rudimentary intelligence and great ferocity. Their clans are held together by more fear and strength than by more sophisticated social bonds. Shit. They look, they look scary. A two-headed wolf. Um, and gives me vision range, which isn't as exciting as I was... Click. Click. Hoping for. So there's a single science anomaly here, or a single food anomaly here. All things considered a pretty crappy start. Um. 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 I can't even get there in a single turn. You know what? This is a mulligan. Home. Home. If there was at least one... Uh... Home. 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 If there was at least one anomaly next to me, so I didn't have to waste a turn to get there, but screw this. I will buy more than I can build, and I can relocate the cities. Yeah, but if I relocate my city, then I, I don't get the bonus the city was on previously. So relocation doesn't exactly make my terrain better. It just moves me to a different terrain. But then I don't get the previous bonuses, so it's shitty either way. 
I still need a good terrain, and that was just crap. Well, especially because there was no dust. There was some science, some food, some production in the forest. The, overall, a crappy start. I don't want to waste hours of my time in a game that I probably will not win with a really crappy start. I'd rather just restart a couple of times. And uh, invest my time in a playthrough that I can, I'm, I can comfortably and, and uh, confidently begin from. from a good position. From. Like this one. Uh, it is for production. And then I'm having a little bit of everything. Dust is the worst one here. Click. And I, like you guys are saying, I do need the dust, don't I? Click. Click. Oh. Click. Oh, come on, game. Click. I've played other playthroughs. Click. And I've had like two anomalies next to my starting position almost every single time. What happened to those playthroughs? Where are those? Okay, this I can work with. Oh. If I dropped my city here, there is so much food. It's just crazy. Not that much production. Oh. <gasps> mm, I guess I am... Oh. Hmm. A little sensitive to the lack of production. Home. Home. But with this much food, maybe my city can grow faster and uh, get production from the borough streets. Home. Yeah, this I can work with. It probably gives me some approval as well. Yeah, that's great. The canopy of this enormous tree houses a cornucopia of life that is equally welcome in the lab or in the table. Quite nice. Oh. Mouse. Now, obviously, I have enough food. I don't need a guy on food. But I do need one on production. And I'm still struggling, but I will grow fast. Escape. Uh, uh, yeah, and I'm near the river, which will allow me for some more dust once I upgrade the... Uh, the river dust production research in the second era, I believe. Oh. So it ha yeah, oh, it's in the first year, right here. Aquapulvistics. Plus two on river during the summer season, if I research that. But I believe the mill foundry has to be gotten first for my production. Oh. After which I believe the mint is still superior to the aquapulveristics. Or, I guess, aqua pulvistics. And then... Boom. Library for the research. And I will want this guy. Escape. But first, the upgrades. And I've got Seratan, which aren't the worst. I don't mind them, actually. They're okay. They're easy to beat. Boom. No, I don't have the language square for negotiations with them yet. Home. 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 Click. Home. Click. Home. Home. Also, here's another question, too. What is my hero good for? It is a ranged unit, has dust efficiency 2, as a governor gives plus 2 dust per citizen and 1% dust per hero's level. Army health boost. I guess I'm gonna be using him with the army since I'm not gonna be putting my citizen on the dust anytime in the early game. And what is his unique skill tree? Plus 2 dust, 3, 3 on terrain with anomaly. 
it's not a Civ wannabe, it's a really stupid way of describing the game, Dubalazi. I believe it stems from a very limited, narrow-mindedness that in, in, in which you have seen Civilization, and then every single game of this genre must be a Civ wannabe, because Civilization is the first and most mainstream game you've seen. Why isn't Civ a uh, Alpha Centauri wannabe? It is, it, by your line of thinking. No, this is a, a solid strategy game that stands on its own without any Civ influences, and it's solid, it plays different, it has many systems that are completely different from Civ, and calling it a wannabe doesn't do anyone any favors. Feet on the street, ownership recovery rate on the city, huh. Safe passage, trade route bonuses. I believe only when I'm uh, governing a city, fast trader, money per trade route, unit production cost reduction on a city. Uh, black market tier allows the city to create trade routes with empires in Cold War or in war. Damn, this is some solid shit for city leadership. And then movement on units is also not bad, but vision on units and garrison, not nearly as good militarily. Not nearly as good, I would say. Range on this, this is actually quite nice, but it's pretty far away and only one thing. I think I want him to be the governor in the mid-game. Once I upgrade him a couple of times, I'm gonna be upgrading the Traveling Salesman and it will already give me four dust from this and then six dust from these two anomalies here. And then I'm gonna get this anomaly here, the died. no, this is not an anomaly. But I will get this one as well, the Rumbling Stones, and that'll be a lot of money. He will be a governor. Um, click. Click. And I'm good to go. I'm good to go. So here are there are quests, there are unit customization systems, there are uh, a different research system, a leveling system for units, a storyline. There are tons of things that Civilization doesn't have. It has been said by women and men wiser than myself that only the gods can know the beginnings and the ends of things. And in claiming to recount the tale, one steps upon their all-powerful toes. I dare to say that I have a tale, however, and in the, in the telling of it, I hope to offend neither the listener nor the gods. For though there is a beginning, it is you who will see it through to the end. Blessings then on the infinitely wise Radat, mistress of Tarad, and the goddess of numbers, and the quick-witted Tabadel. Master of words and the god of commerce and on their families and on their children and on you and on yours I was born Ashun Ardalgur in the year of the white sparrow called 23rd penitence by the red wizards or 1647 ASA by the metal lords the fourth son of a fourth son I knew there would be little of my family's fortune for me so, when I was of an age, I set out to make my own, armed with only the wisdom of my clan and the blazing confidence of a youth who has not yet seen the great misfortune. I did not... I did in time see it, though I will not trouble you with the tales of those years, or the thousands year but I traveled across this amazing world, of the sights I saw, of the wealth I won and lost and won again. Suffice it to say, in the year of the Sylvan of, known as 1675 by the Metal Lords, I founded this city with a handful of troops, seeking to discover the truth behind behind certain legends. Hmm. First pacify the haunts villages in the region, with the ruins indicated by the rays of dust. Oh. So I guess first I will have to pacify the haunts villages in this region here. After which I will have to probably search the ruins afterwards. All right. Um, click. Well, let's see if what's in these ruins. Um, um, 
30 dust right there. Click. I'm gonna take that. Click. And unfortunately... It seems like we have only one Saratan village. Click. In our main starting area. Click. Click. Now, if I put my army together, I could pacify it right here, right now. It might actually be smart. Click. In previous playthroughs, I have been struggling with marauding armies because I haven't pacified the, the villages too fast. So let's put the priority on pacification rather than just exploration. Click. Click. Let's meet my armies together and then make short work of these Saratan. That sounds good. Next turn, my city grows. Two on production, Founders Memorial will speed up. But man, do I need faster production. Um, I am buying this shit right now. Escape. So that next turn, I can build the mill foundry that I'm going to research right now. Click. I need this for my build order to be better lined up together. It's a good game, Cory. It's pretty interesting, I have to admit. Um, click. Feel free to check out the first playthrough I've made of this on YouTube, in which I learn and, through learning, explain the basic mechanics of this game. Click. May uh, explain some more of the things that are happening behind the scenes. Um. But also, it will show you me playing like crap. Um. I suppose. What is this? Setseke Ho. Move this city. Crazy. Where are the scarabs? Oh, this is the scarab. Man, it's gigantic. Um. Holy shit. Um. Um. So, Mill Foundry in five turns, Empire Mint in four turns. I'm hoping the city will grow in three, and then I can put one more production. And the production of both things will line up together. I think we're doing a mistake. Roving clan basing units are bad. Um, click. I don't know how they are. But I'm pretty sure that Seraton are also bad. And because of my speed, I can defeat Seraton basic units that are... Pretty much ranged, so I can charge into them on the first turn and they, they can't shoot anymore. They can't be that bad. Click. Um. It's Seratan. Um. I'm even getting militia reinforcements that I won't even need, I think. Um. Click. Um. Click. Um. Click. If it was something scary, like the Ursus, or the um, the Haunts, I wouldn't do it. Click. Um. But, um, Saratan, I believe I can own. See, that one seems to be stunned already, and half dead. And then this one will just heal him, so they don't even deal damage to me anymore. Um, seems good enough. Yeah, there's one gone. Um, yeah, I'm fine. Fluffy, welcome back! Check it out, man! Endless Legend! So, what are you eating there? What have you got? What have you got? Maybe you've been fighting against harder opponents for now. Seratan units are actually quite bad alone. Um, they're supposed to have some support in front of them, because they are support units, they are not fighters. They're not good fighters, in any case. Um. Um. But, I guess Sisters of Mercy aren't that strong either. Click. But I wouldn't dare attack the Haunts, for example. Click. 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 
Papusas? What is that? Click. Fluffy, I humbly request a detailed explanation of Papusa. Oh. Cotton candy is not food, furry saint. Who could ever tell you that? It's, it's just sugar blown up with air. But you're just basically grabbing sugar and eating it. It's... Oh. Ancient texts and scientific studies say that some locations are interconnected by successfully activating triggers in their places. You can uncover increasingly important treasures, but only a hero can do it, and only once you start you will launch a countdown, after which a chain effect vanishes forever. So I need to use the hero-led army to search the location indicated on the map for 10 grass silk. That'll give me city fortification and approval when activated. And how far am I going to run? There, and it's probably time-based. And I guess the, the from the way it sounds, the quest will just keep going. Click. I can do it, I have fast units. And it is giving me scouting information as well. Oh, Fluffy, I really would like to know. Oh, and, and then Furry Saint would like to know as well. Could you do it for us? Maybe once you stop eating and you can more conveniently type. Or maybe someone else can uh, Google an image and drop it. That would also help. I, I have to know now, what the hell could that be? Yep, she's gonna be a, a salesman. Oh. A governor. Traditional Salvadoran dish made of a thick handmade corn tortilla. Made of a handmade corn tortilla? But so is it so what is it stuffed with? Click. Yeah, Delvers, I will not... I'm not gonna risk attacking yet either, I think. Oh. Building up the Saratan village for population would be quite nice. This could be sped up... For 42. Mouse. Now, if I wanted to grow the city faster, I guess it's not making that much of a difference. This is just too much work, this Saratan village, for now. I will want the Empire Mint. Oh. And I will speed it up so that the Empire Mint can line up properly. Oh. Click. Oh. Alright, I got it. And then the next one will give me 80 dust, which is quite nice. Oh. And I guess I have like 10 turns left. Click. All right, let's keep doing it. It's it's good money. It's good money. I'll take it. Click. Oh. Click. Oh. 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 But if I wanted to buy that. I would have to pay... Oh, and now it's four turns because I built more production. Cool. So I guess I can maybe buy it in a couple of turns. Oh. And then get the mint. Or maybe I can buy the mint first. It's only two turns for the mint. Let's get the mint first. Escape. I could almost buy it, but not quite. Oh, Strange Worm, welcome back! How did the conquest go? Oh. Uh, Kazanji, I would also not touch with my weak army yet. But the dr but the Seratan, I totally could. Oh. 
Yeah, these are another ones that I would be scared of. All the scary factions down there. I believe this would be the last one I can actually make before the quest ends. Oh. Oh. Also, can I buy it? Nope. But I will be able to in a couple of turns. Oh. Click. I guess next turn if I get paid now. Oh. Plant side is broken and trying to guide the unwashed hordes of people joining random squads is terrible. Ah. Oh. Yeah, that that game can be a mess sometimes. I I I would I have not even gone close to that game after I've seen what's actually happening inside. It's it can be pretty hectic with such a gigantic battle. Some people enjoy it. I like the FPS of eight players, four versus four, when every player matters rather than those gigantic crowds. So the next one would give me grass silk again, and I assume the one after that would give me the money again. <laughs> 